how's everybody doing today? Started out cold today, it was about three degrees. And we got a job to do down in Underhill with the Volvo and the Mulcher. So I'm letting it warm up a little bit. It should be around 30 degrees around 11 o'clock. So we're gonna go and do it then. But it's the first uh, job since we tuned it up. So I'll be eager to see <clears throat> how well it does. Um, we've got probably three hours worth of work there. Just some light duty stuff. Um, it's on some inclines, so I thought the excavator would probably be better suited to do the job, but be a good little test run to see how it goes. Um, we've been booking quite a few jobs lately and looking at tons of them. The snow, there maybe is like six, eight inches of snow right now. Um, it's settled down quite a bit and it's pretty good driving, so should be able to get out there on some of these jobs with both machines. We're supposed to get a little bit of snow towards the end of the week here, but nothing major, maybe three or four inches. And after that, it's like high 30s, low 40s, freezing at night. So Sugar Maker is going to be the ones making out well. And hopefully we'll be doing just as well. We'll look at a couple more jobs tomorrow. Um, yesterday I looked at a three or four acre job that is going to be done for uh, natural resources. They want to take this overgrown field and a little bit of forest and make it into a pollination area for bees and butterflies. So we would go in there, mulch it right down, and then there's some trees that would need to be cut and grind those stumps down. And there's certain areas within that that need to be left alone, which is where the beehives will go, I guess. So, kind of excited about that, hoping that we get it. Um, a lot of times you find these customers really don't know what they're getting into. Um, you talk to them, you know, they're looking to find out how much it is to do this and that. And sometimes, you need to save yourself a little bit of time and kind of get an idea of what they want to spend because you know I've looked at a lot of jobs that aren't even mulching jobs and people have these <clears throat> grand ideas but they only want to spend 1500 bucks or something like that so you know you listen to them talk and you know the dollar signs keep going up and up and up as you listen to them and sometimes at some point you have to say, listen, I, I really don't want to sound like I'm trying to take advantage of you or anything, but do you have any idea what you really want to spend here? Because, you know, the skid steer mulcher, for instance, you know, I want to get 3000 a day for that. And the excavator, I think I'd probably get 2500 a day for that. So you start looking at their jobs and you can see it all of a sudden becoming ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars and you just kind of have to tell them that <laughs> very casually uh, before they go on any longer because sometimes if they're only thinking it's 500 bucks then you're wasting your time and, and you're wasting their time so I try to treat everybody great and give them a price and this time of year I'm a little more hungry so I can sharpen my pencil a bit, but uh, in the spring and summer and uh, fall, you know, the price is what it is. And we usually have so much work going on that I don't necessarily need the job they're showing me. Um, it sounds arrogant, but uh, you know, last year we had five or six people cancel right before we were supposed to go there. And uh, it didn't phase me a bit because I just moved up the schedule some more. So um, I never really understood why people would book the job and then at the last second cancel it. I had a guy last year for his driveway and a culvert replacement down in Jericho. Uh, 
went and checked the job out, quoted him 4,500 bucks. Uh, a week later, he goes, yep, I want to do it, but I need to go away for a month on vacation. Uh, when I come back, let's do it. I said, okay. A month went by, he emails me, I'm back if you want to come uh, sometime soon and do it. That works for me. I said, all right, let me look at my schedule. I said, we can be there in a week. He said, great. Four or five days later, I email him. I said, hey, we're ready to come on whatever it was, Thursday or Friday. Um, if I could meet up with you and collect a 25% deposit. Um, and then the rest when we're done. Uh, he said, he responded in an email, okay, dot, dot, dot. That was kind of odd. And then the next day, he emails me. Uh, I can't do the job. Uh, I want to cancel it. <clears throat> that was really weird to me. I thought, that's really weird. Like, all of a sudden, I asked for a deposit, like we always do. And next thing you know, he's not interested anymore. And so, it was annoying, but very odd. And I almost feel like I might have dodged a bullet. <clears throat> Maybe this guy had no intention of paying his bill at the end. I don't know. So... I put him in a special folder in my emails that says trouble customers. But uh, so right now, <clears throat> last year we had Brian and I, and I had a part time guy who would help with labor. I had another part time guy that would help if I needed some truck driving done, things like that. But uh, we really were understaffed. And this year, going into this season, um, with more machines, more trucks, with plans to expand. Um, <clears throat> we ordered a brand new international HX tandem dump truck. Um, that'll be here in, well, the truck gets built in March and it goes to the body company. I really hope to have it by May sometime. Um, I need to hire a full-time driver for that. Um, I hired a new operator who has a lot of experience. It's very bumpy. Um, <clears throat> my plan with him is he's going to be doing a lot of the mulching jobs. <clears throat> uh, the downside is he doesn't have a CDL, so I'll have to move all the equipment for him all the time. Um, I've been thinking about hiring another operator can do a lot of the grading stuff so I can spend more time doing the marketing and the back-end administrative work um, but I haven't decided I may shelf that for this year and just um, run the grading side myself with Brian and with the dump truck operator we'll have to see how that goes but uh, kind of finding myself with many trucks <clears throat> so trying to figure out if I want to keep the 5500 dump I don't really see using it that much it is something that's considered handy um, but you know it's a big payment so I don't know how handy it is really but it is nice to have around um, this winter has been nice having it because I've left it pretty much with the plow and the spreader on and it's always been ready to go every morning uh, that we've needed to sand or scrape or whatever so um, yeah just trying to figure some stuff out the uh, operator I hired we've got a new pickup coming for him just a bare bones Ram 3500 regular cab long box pickup uh, with the Hemi I didn't want to spend the extra money on a diesel since he's not going to be towing with it um, probably we'll put a plow and a spreader on that come winter time and this 5500 crew uh, will have a plow for it but won't necessarily need it it can just kind of be a backup so um, I don't love plowing compared to machine work there's no money in it it's a cutthroat industry <clears throat> you know we have a few commercial contract accounts and a handful of residentials it's enough work for two guys to go out for four hours each and get it 
done and make a little money but uh, it's just not profitable it's, I've been doing it since I was 16 I'm 40 I'm just sick of it um, so yeah so that's the plan for going into 2023 um, mulching grading probably the occasional excavation job but uh, once we start running our commercials um, on Google and social media we'll be inundated with sales calls and we'll start to cherry pick what ones we want to do and what ones are the most profitable so um, probably less drainage work this year is what I'm guessing not opposed to it but certainly make more money mulching and breeding so I'm going to keep those machines going but uh, the big question will be how much excavator mulching business do we get and how does this Volvo handle it it is on the lower end of the flow chart for that uh, mulcher so we'll have to just see how it goes the next couple jobs um, see if it handles it doesn't handle it then we will upgrade and uh, go a different direction so um, I've looked into you know the Volvo 88 um, which seems like it would do a good job but the salesman who sold me the 60 doesn't seem interested in selling me one I've tried to get a hold of him for two or three weeks be a text message and once in a while he will respond and <clears throat> tell me he'll look into it and or other times he just won't respond so um, the Kubota salesman is much more eager to sell so I would consider a Kubota 080 um, the pricing is the same between the Volvo and the and the Kubota looks like it was about 140 grand or so for a new unit um, a lot of guys run mulchers on 80s and seem to like them. So, um, Kubota, you know, they make a good product. They're simple. Um, it was about 140 grand for the 80 with 24 inch steel tracks, uh, straight blade, hydraulic um, coupler, um, thumb, digging bucket, tilt bucket for 140 grand or so. <clears throat> something to consider um, my cat salesman who we got the first 259 through and are getting the next 259 through he has a 2019 cat uh, 309 with 645 hours on it um, which is like the perfect mulching machine uh, for 153,000 um, so low hours four years old would be perfect for us um, a little bit more money than the Kubota, but you know, you've got that second pump just for the mulcher. So, you know, for an extra 13 grand, yeah, it's four years older, but it might be a better fit. We'll have to uh, cross that bridge if we need to cross that bridge. So, um, that's it for now for an update, I guess. Enough rambling. Um, we're going to go off and <clears throat> pick up a new drone at Best Buy went with the DJI Mini 3 I think um, so yeah we're gonna grab that and take some footage of today's job and uh, Thursday's job I like to use that follow me feature and gives nice perspective from the air when you're doing mulching it's good for marketing and YouTube and stuff so but anyway just figured I'd ramble for a few minutes and we'll catch you guys later